Palpation of the abdomen. Palpation of the abdomen consists of superficial and deep sliding palpation as described by Obrasov and Strajetsko, 20th century Ukrainian physicians and scientists. Superficial palpation of the abdomen is used for detection of painful areas, tensity of the abdomen, superficial tumor or hernia. The patient's legs must be slightly bent in the knee joints. In the absence of pain in the abdomen, start superficial palpation from the left inguinal region. Compare with the opposite side, gradually moving upwards in the direction of epigastrum. Then, gradually move downwards following the median line. Normally, the abdomen is soft and not painful. Deep sliding palpation of the abdomen. There are four steps of deep palpation of the abdomen. First step, placement of the fingers on the abdominal wall. Second, formation of skin fold on the abdominal wall. Third, deep hand deep into the abdomen. Fourth, deep sliding movement of the hand. Firstly, palpate the sigmoid colon. Divide the distance between the umbilicus and left anterior superior iliac spine into three parts. Carry out the first step of palpation by placing your hand on the point between the middle and external third in such a way. Second step, forming a skin fold. All skin folds are made in the direction of the face except during the palpation of the liver, spleen and kidney. Next, carry out the third step. Dip your hand deep into the abdomen during 3-4 expirations and on inspiration hold your hand in place. And now, during expiration, carry out the fourth step of palpation, that is slow, deep, sliding movements of the hand. Once again, look at the palpation of sigmoid colon. First step, placement of the fingers on the abdominal wall. Second, formation of skin fold on the abdominal wall. Third, deep hand deep into the abdomen on expiration. Once again, fourth, deep sliding movement of the hand. Then, we palpate the cecum, which is located at symmetrical point to the sigmoid colon region on the right side. First step, placement of the fingers. Second, formation of skin fold on the abdominal wall. Third, deep hand deep into the abdomen. Once again, fourth, deep sliding movement of the hand. Palpation of the terminal part of ilium. First step, placement of the fingers. Second, Formation of skin fold on the abdominal wall. Third, deep hand deep into the abdomen. Once again, fourth, deep sliding movement of the hand. Palpation of the transverse colon. First, we must locate the lower border of stomach by auscultation while lightly scratching the abdominal wall. Move downwards by 2-3 cm and palpate with both hands. First, placement of the fingers. Second, formation of skin fold on the abdominal wall. Third, deep hand deep into the abdomen. Fourth, deep sliding movement of the hand. Palpation of the greater curvature of the stomach is performed at the same place as the lower border of the stomach. We carry out the four steps of deep palpation. Now, palpate the pylorus. 
The pylorus is palpated on the bisector of a right angle. The angle is formed by the anterior median line and a line 2 cm above the umbilicus. Place your hand on the bisector near the costal arch. Make a skin fold. Deep hand deep into the abdomen. Deep sliding movement of the hand. Palpation of normal sized and slightly enlarged liver. To palpate a normal sized liver, it is necessary to do the following. Firstly, ask the patient to place his elbows close to the chest. Secondly, ask the patient to breathe deeply so the examiner's hand placed on the abdomen is raised significantly. Say, now, please breathe calmly, but when I ask, please make deep, slow inspiration as you have done earlier. Thirdly, locate with gentle percussion the lower border of the liver on right mid-clavicular line and percuss upwards. Fourthly, the lower part of the right hemithorax with your left hand. Pay attention that your left thumb is placed on the edge of the costal arch. Next, follow the four steps of palpation. First step, place your right hand in such a way so that your fingertips are above the lower border of the liver estimated by percussion. If the border of the liver is located higher than the edge of the costal arch, your fingertips must still be placed on the edge of the costal arch. Second step, Form a skin fold downward. Third step, in three expirations, deep hand deep into the abdomen. On the first expiration, the hand is almost placed vertically downward. On second, press downward and go below the ribcage. And on third expiration, almost horizontally into the ribcage. Fourth step, Ask the patient to make a complete, deep, slow inspiration as he has done earlier. At this point, your hand remains below the costal arch until the time the border of the liver slides beneath your fingertips. Usually, when the liver is dense and enlarged, this step has to be done gently with care not to cause discomfort and pain in the patient. Once again, Look how the liver is palpated. The examiner asks the patient to breathe deeply to raise the hand placed on the abdomen. Say, when I ask, please breathe in deeply and slowly, and now, breathe calmly. The examiner asks the patient to inspire slowly and deeply. It is obvious that the fingers jerked when the fingertips rolled over the lower border of the liver. Percussion of the liver Percussion of the liver by the Kurlovs method is used for estimation of five points. To estimate the first point, percuss on right mid-clavicular line downwards until a flat sound. To estimate the second point, Percuss gently on the same line upwards until a dull sound. The third point is conditional and is located on the median line at the level of the first point. To estimate the fourth point, percuss gently on the median line upwards until a dull sound. For estimation of the fifth point, percuss on the left costal arch in the direction of the third point. Measure the distances between the points. The distance between first and second points represents the size of the right lobe of liver. 
between third and fourth points size of the left lobe of the liver and the distance between third and fifth points also represents the size of the left lobe. Palpation of the gallbladder. This is performed for detection of pain in case of cholecystitis. It can be elicited by two methods. First method Second method Palpation of the pancreas Firstly, palpate the head of pancreas Place your hand on the projection of pancreas on the abdominal wall Form a skin fold Dip your hand and perform deep sliding movements Then, palpate the body of pancreas using the four steps of palpation Palpate the tail of pancreas. Place the fingers on the abdominal wall. Form skin fold on the abdominal wall. Deep hand deep into the abdomen and make deep sliding movement of the hand. Normally, the pancreas is not palpated. Palpation of the slightly enlarged spleen. Ask the patient to lie on his right side with his right leg straight and left leg flexed at the knee and hip joints. The patient places both his hands under his head. Such position provides the best relaxation of left half of the abdomen and a better access to the spleen. Now, perform the four steps of palpation. First step, place your right hand below the costal arch. Your left hand stays on the lower part of left hemithorax and slightly fixes it. Second step, form a skin fold downward. Third step, in 3-4 expirations, dip your hand deeply beneath the left rib cage. Fourth step, as in palpation of liver, ask the patient to make deep and slow inspiration. Place your hand beneath the rib cage till the end of inspiration. Normally, the spleen is not palpated. Percussion of the spleen. In most cases, it is sufficient to estimate only the width of the spleen on left middle axillary line. Palpation of the kidneys. Palpation of the kidneys is performed bimanually. First step of palpation. Place your left hand under the lumbar region. Place your right hand below the costal arch. Second step. Forming a skin fold is not necessary here. Third step. In 3-4 expirations, dip your hand deeply into the abdomen vertically downwards. Fourth step. Ask the patient to make deep and slow inspiration. At this point, the right hand remains fixed and the left hand slightly raises the lumbar region. Normally, the kidneys cannot be palpated. Enlarged or swollen kidney can be felt by your right fingertips when the patient inspires. Then, palpate the left kidney in the same way.